Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, welcome, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening for you. Um, I'm glad that you are all able to connect with us to attend this information webinar on CBIE 2021, our virtual conference. So my name is Melissa Payne. I'm the Director of Membership Research and Learning at the Canadian Bureau for International Education, or as most of you know us, CBIE. And today I am going to host the webinar, but I'm also joined with um, my colleagues and conference planner extraordinaires, uh, Alisar uh, Hajar and Paige Prothero. Um, Ali has been with us, um, your seasoned conference planner with CBIE and Paige had joined us last year and um, participated in our virtual conference, organizing the virtual conference last year. So they both come with a wealth of experience and uh, will be here to help with the question and answer period at the end. So before we begin our presentation today, I'd like to uh, start by acknowledging that we're presenting the webinar from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. We come here with respect for the land that we're on today and for respect for the people who have been and are living here today. We are going to run through um, what the conference is, um, just some of the uh, logistics around that. We're going to talk about what's new at the conference this year, or is a little bit changed from last year. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the actual call for proposals and how to submit a successful proposal, uh, followed by some key dates, and then we'll open it up for some questions. And feel free to um, raise your hand or uh, you know, put a question in the Q&A or in the chat and uh, we we're happy to answer as we go through. So for those who are new to CBIE, um, we are a national nonprofit association. We're dedicated to supporting Canadian education institutions who are our members. Uh, we're dedicated to supporting them in achieving their internationalization goals through advocacy, capacity building, and partnership. So, so Every year for uh, over 50 years now, we have held an annual conference in November. Uh, this year is our second year doing the conference virtually. Um, so uh, we, uh, we've been around the block once, so we, we know what to expect and we're really excited to be able to, to add some new elements and really um, provide uh, a really great experience uh, and bring a lot of elements that hopefully will, will make you feel like, almost like you're, you're in person. Um, our conference, we're estimating at least a thousand people will be in attendance this year at the conference from at least 40 different countries. Uh, while we don't have, um, you know, a specific theme per se, we do want to use this space to talk about what we're all talking about right now. And that's really reimagining, you know, international education, reimagining community on a global scale. So how are we as international educators uh, navigating the complexities of, of you know, the, this global disruption that we've been living through? And how can we use this, embrace this opportunity to really look at building or transforming our education experiences um, towards a more sustainable and inclusive future for all? So we're having the conversations now, I'm sure you are in your own institutions, and we really want to do that, but at the national level uh, with colleagues from across the country. So all of this information I just wanted to let you know is available on our website. Um, but just um, so you're aware, the conference is going to be held over five days in November. So typically when we do it in person, it's a three day conference with um, some, some work on the, on the uh, weekend prior to. Um, but this year, like we did last year, we'll be having a five day conference, uh, pretty full days. 
Uh, and we expect, you know, we expect people to, to move in and out of sessions um, throughout the five days that, that um, we are presenting the conference. So this year we're hoping to have a lot of opportunity for networking and visiting the exhibitors and visiting our World Pavilion with our international partners. Um, we will be having some morning um, plenary panels and sessions uh, to open and kick off the conference each day. We'll, we'll be doing these sessions that are all we're all together. Um, we'll have concurrent sessions that'll look a little bit different this year. Um, and then we also are planning on hosting some social or networking activities at the end of the day, as well as um, the Excellence Award ceremony, which we always have uh, during during the conference. So we will continue with, uh, with that event um, as part of our conference and our annual general meeting, uh, which we which we'll be holding on the Friday, uh, right before the end of our week. So like I said, we're virtual again this year. We've, uh, we've had some time uh, to work with the platform. We're using the same conference platform we did last year, uh, but again, trying to use the features, um, go a little bit more deep on some of the features so that your user experience is going to be top notch. Um, so just to say that there will be a um, new networking, new space for um, different kinds of content, more interactive content, more, more ways to connect. So uh, look for that. This year, um, we are incorporating some of the, the feedback we received from last year. So we are gonna be holding um, tutorials. Oh, sorry guys. We'll be holding um, tutorials or how to's before the conference for all attendees and panelists and exhibitors so that you know when the conference opens and you're in the platform you're going to be easy, able to easily navigate it so we are hoping to do some training or just just a little um, give people some time to to get comfortable with the platform before the conference begins And since I have you here as a captive audience, I wanted to plug or remind you, I would say that we have um, our, our annual excellence awards nominations are opening this week. Um, and I just wanted to uh, bring this up and encourage you all to think about, you know, your colleagues or the programs that you work on at your institutions. Um, and think about, you know, who is doing or some, or is there some excellent, um, achievements or work that's being done and is there somebody or a program or a group of people that you could nominate uh, for one of our awards. We, we um, have awards for individuals, for groups, for practitioners, as well as students. Uh, so just thinking about those different groups, um, you'll be able to check out all of the categories and the information is again on our website. And just one more thing to be aware of. Um, as we um, talk about conference is that we do offer two kinds of bursaries. We have a bursary uh, for new professionals that is administered through our, our um, INTL group, which is our international network of tomorrow's, tomorrow's leaders. So this is for new professionals. And last year, we also introduced our equity, diversity and inclusion bursaries. And this is really to expand the participation in the, in the conference. So uh, applications will be accepted for those uh, bursaries along with the parameters of what they look like and that that happens in September so look out for that if you're interested or, or perhaps um, you know would fit into one of the categories for the uh, available bursaries. So just to talk about some of the things that are new or different, I would say this year. Um, we have um, some expanded themes. We have some different formats that we're piloting. Um, we'll talk about those a little uh, later. Uh, more networking. We heard that time and again that we wanted, people wanted more space to network and more opportunities to do so. Um, and so, through our platform, we have some really interesting ways to do that. There's di there's direct networking opportunities. We have um, a feature for, to do some speed networking, which will be really interesting. Uh, but we are introducing more 
uh, kinds of networking opportunities and also more time throughout the day to connect with our colleagues. Um, because we know that attending a conference, um, talking and meeting with people is half the fun. Um, we will be having uh, culture and social events. Um, this year, we usually, of course, at a conference, you typically see a gala event. Uh, we won't be doing that this year uh, virtually, uh, but we will be having social events, cultural events, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to connect with some of our, our partners at the World Pavilion who can who will be able to, to spotlight some of their cultural, um, we'll be able to, to have some entertainment through um, these, these events that'll be happening um, at breaks and in, in the evening, or not in the evening, it's not really evening, but after the full program. So we will be having um, different kinds of social activities. Um, last year, we uh, did not have our sessions available on demand right away. We provided a library of on-demand sessions after the conference. This year, we will we'll be turning all sessions into on-demand content uh, during the conference so that if you, you know, you see something at one o'clock but you can't attend, it will be on-demand a few hours, I'd like to say a few hours later. Um, but the intent is that you'll be able to attend live sessions as well as recorded sessions throughout the week. Uh, and something that might be different from last year, last year we had an introduction that was recorded and then we went into live um, sessions or we had partial sessions, we had part of the sessions recorded in live Q and A's. Uh, we won't be doing that this year. This year, the entire session will be live, uh, presented live, Q and A will be live. So um, we'll definitely be able to interact a little bit more with the presenters. Um, and we're doing that, one of the reasons is you know, just by virtue of being on Zoom all day long, like everybody is, uh, we're hoping to have sessions that are about 45 minutes long, as opposed to an hour, an hour and a half, hour and 15. Um, and the, the idea behind that is that we're, we're going to stress keeping those uh, introductions very, very short and jumping right into the content um, so that we have time to um, have a rich learning opportunity, but also that there's time throughout the day to take some breaks from the computer. Uh, and then we are also going to have the uh, conference platform available in app form, so you can take it anywhere you want to go. Um, you'll be able to join the fun at any time with the mobile app. So talking about the sessions, like I was saying, um, we've changed it around this year because we're virtual, the sessions are looking to be shorter. Um, and like I said, we are going to emphasize having very short introductions and really getting to the meat of a session uh, quite quickly. Um, so you'll see we have sort of four different content formats. Uh, the first two, the sessions or the hot topic to sessions are really similar in that they're the 45 minutes. The difference is that a session is what you normally think of when we think of a, 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 con a concurrent session, it's mainly presentation with a Q&A at the end versus our hot topic discussions, which would come from you in proposals. But these would be more of a, a short introduction of a topic and more of a discussion uh, or more of an interactive session where, where um, you would facilitate a conversation amongst your attendees. So we are looking to do, of course, there's lots of information that we want to share. But there's also, uh, you know, that whole idea of best practices or exploring critical issues um, with each other in, within a session. So we have those two as options to submit uh, for session types. We also know that some things need more time. We need more than 45 minutes to get into a topic. And so we are offering uh, the option to submit something we're calling a workshop. Uh, and and it's, it can be proposed as an hour and a half to two hours. Um, this is really something that's that we're thinking of if we're going to do something longer that's you know an hour and a half or two hours that we'd like to have a lot of um, interaction. So while we want that information sharing to happen, we also in a workshop situation would want to have um, a lot of interaction or some activities throughout so that they are a little bit longer but more immersive and more engaging. 
And the fourth option that we've introduced this year is, which I'm sure you've seen at other conferences or even virtual conferences, is poster sessions. So in our idea of a poster session, we're really looking for, this is where you can put your recorded content. So if you have a, a PowerPoint that you wanna record, it's five to 10 minutes long to talk about a program uh, or a project or some best practice that you've you've done this past year, um, but you don't wanna have a whole session and you don't wanna do the, the Q&A and you just wanna share your information, then we would, would invite you to submit as a poster session. Uh, and this will really encourage uh, we will encourage attendees. They'll be um, on the on the conference platform, available all the time. People can go at their leisure and review and and click. So these can be videos. They can be uh, like I said, powerpoints with recorded. It's really um, we wanted to have a space for um, information or ideas or projects or just other things people want to share that might be better suited as recorded content. So. This is also um, available and just, well, well, there are parameters about how many live sessions you, uh, you are able to facilitate for the conference. For posters, you, we invite you to submit uh, more than one if, if you have uh, lots of interesting uh, information you wanna share. So our session theme. So as we said, the, the, the idea of like a conference theme that's one specific focus is, it, it is the conversation that we're having, right? We are reimagining, we're in this, the middle of this major disruption throughout the world. And so really what we're looking at is, you know, various elements of international education and how it intersects, um, with with what's happening in the world and let's have those conversations at the national level so we've included some new areas that we don't often have a lot of content around is something like ie or international education and career pathways um also you know focusing on international education the sdgs climate change um those are areas that we want to think more and more about how are we doing that um how are we as practitioners and leaders in the education, uh, international education sector, um, inputting in these areas, um, you know, equity, diversity, inclusion. These are things that we're talking about all the time. So we, we encourage proposals around that theme. Mental health, of course, is very timely. Um, so in addition to sort of the areas of work the traditional uh, areas of work, learning abroad, student advising, um, recruitment admissions, we're also looking to think about those other themes that are really um, top of mind for everybody right now. Uh, so successful proposals or sessions, what are we looking for when you're submitting? Um, well, clarity, is is key right can you articulate are you articulating goals and takeaways very clearly um we also are really interested in uh session proposals that demonstrate collaboration uh, amongst colleagues or professionals within very different institutions so having a, a session from the perspective of you know, a college and a university is always very welcomed or, or just two different institutions. Um, we, we like to see that collaboration between professionals throughout, um, throughout the sector. Um, encouraging of, of participation from your audience. I know that's, uh, we're always thinking about how we can do that even in our day-to-day -day meetings, right? Um, but, you know, ways that you're gonna connect with your audience, um, ways that you're gonna ask for their participation, innovative ways or different ways of doing that is always encouraged. And that practical piece as well. Um, through your presentation, are you offering research, resources, insights, you know, frameworks, tools, these things, what kind of um, takeaways that are tangible, that are practical, uh, those are always very interesting for us to, to see at the conference and for attendees to, to take, take with them.
So just some quick logistics when we're thinking about, um, you know, you're submitting your proposal, you've thought about a great idea, you have some fantastic partners, uh, you're writing the, you know, the proposal in a, in a way that's very clear and, and well articulated. Um, and just to think about when you're delivering, right, we want, um, we ask that individuals don't submit for more than two live sessions, two sessions as a presenter. Um, we are using Zoom for the session, so hopefully everybody's very familiar and will be able to work with Zoom. Um, like I said, everything is live this year, so you will have to be available on the day and the time of your scheduled session. Um, I've already said, again, we're going to offer some training or a tutorial beforehand just so you are familiar with how it will work and how you can connect as a, as a presenter on the day of. Uh, and I mean, this, as we're all sitting here on our webcams or our microphones or internet connections, you know, we will encourage presenters to turn on their camera when they can. Um, and so we will definitely, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so obviously wanting to have a stable internet connection, a webcam and microphone so that you're able to um, speak clearly about that. Um, the session PowerPoint, we're hoping for that to be submitted uh, prior to. So we have a whole process once you've been accepted to submit a proposal. We have a whole process um, for you to submit your presentation, to submit your bio, your photo, um, so that we have all that information. So on the day of, if something happens, we as you know the organizers can make sure your presentation is available and you would be able to log in if you had a bad connection by phone, for instance. Um, Accepted presenters are going to have to register for the conference and pay the conference fee um, and all of that information around that piece will be will again be emailed to you once you've been accepted as a presenter. Um, and so just some notes when you do submit. So we have through our conference website, we have a submit button, we have an application, online application form. Uh, you can save and go back so you don't have to submit the whole piece altogether. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm seeing some questions come in. So I'm just, I'm just going to finish this and then I can answer some questions. Um, yeah, so proposals. We, we're looking for one primary contact for um, your proposal to connect with. So you as the primary contact will be responsible for coordinating with the rest of your presenters. Um, the proposals are evaluated by an external selection committee, um, which is made up of, of members of, um, sorry, individuals from our member institutions. Um, your submissions, again, you can save, you can go back, but once you submit, it is locked in. Um, so it's really important for you to also save a copy of your proposal for your own reference. Um, we are not, um, we are not accepting proposals that uh, pertain to marketing products or services. Um, we're happy to have uh, private sector companies um, that are part of the sector present, uh, but of but we're looking for proposals from the private, the private sector or companies. So sessions are really about providing information or you know, good practice, or it, it needs to be relevant and information sharing and learning for our attendees and not a, a proposal focused on marketing your product or your services. Uh, we do not um, review incomplete submissions and we do not review emailed submissions. So just, uh, we also have this on our website to have a, um, you know, to, for you to sort of think about when you submit your proposals, they will be evaluated, um, you know, against this criteria. Uh, so you're welcome to review. Again, that's on the website so you can take a look. So just thinking about, okay, when you're designing your proposal, are you, you know, ensuring that you've hit all of the, the evaluation criteria? that we will be reviewing um, your proposal against. And then just finally, I'm almost done here and then we can get to questions. Um, so our call for proposals closes on June 15th. You will be notified 
um, of the decision of, on your proposal by July 15th. Uh, and then we would be looking for you to confirm participation by the end of July on the 30th. And then you'll have from July 30th until middle of October to submit your presentation and your bio and your photo. Um, that whole process is managed by my colleague Paige. Um, and so she, she connects with all of the, the presenters to ensure that we have all the information ready to go before we, uh, we get into the platform and into the conference. Okay, so we've got some questions. Uh, okay, I have one in the, the chat here that's asking about session types. By minimum two, do you mean that? The... So what we, yeah, so what we're talking about when, I'm, when we talk about the number of presenters is that we like to have sessions that are presented by at least two people. So one topic, um, but from the perspective of between two to four people. So uh, Sasha, I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, so I'm asked, um, do all session formats require collaborative work? Um, the solo presentation again would be best as a poster session. session. Uh, typically we look at having collabor collaboration um, presentations or at least if you are presenting, we do accept you know, one topic, one idea, but typically we like to have two presenters. Um, especially in virtual, you'll want to have a second presenter to help navigate questions and opportunity. Uh, session types. So I have a question here about a proposal. Um, yeah, so just to confirm, you can have, absolutely, we're looking for more than, than one presenter. So we're looking for a 45 minute session, having between two and four presenters, in that session presenting is really what, what we're looking for. So absolutely, um, the session, Sakura, that you have just mentioned sounds really, really interesting. Um, we would love to hear more about that. And we would absolutely um, welcome having the perspective from three different presenters in that session. Uh, I swear it was. was. So more information on the presenter's qualification and experience. I can, I'm happy to, to redefine that um, uh, and add a little bit more about uh, in the selection criteria where we talk about presenter's qualification and experience. I'm happy to, to give more information and add that to our website to give more clarification on that. So absolutely, I can, we can uh, make a note and provide more information for that uh, so that that, so that uh, question in the rubrics is uh, is clear for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and just so I can, I know some of these uh, questions are being answered in the chat, but interdepartmental collaborations for proposals are also encouraged and accepted. If you are, you know, they don't always have to be from, um, to different organizations or institutions. We're just looking for different perspectives. So meaning that we, we don't often accept one person speaking out a project from their one perspective. We're looking to, to hear from it from different areas. So yeah, yes, if it is just one institution then you can still submit something like that, especially if there's uh, you're talking about interdepartmental collaboration. That's something I think we're all interested in. How do we work better with other folks within our institutions? So we definitely would accept that. Um, are there any other questions? Gina. Melissa, we have a question. Um, can we have students as presenters? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, always really great to hear from, you know, those that we, that we work with and we support. So students are more than welcome to attend and to be presenters, yes. Um, is there somewhere we can see the fullest questions in submission form? Sure. Yeah, Jean, uh, we can actually absolutely offer that and provide. I'll, I'll post that to the website. Um, we'll make we'll get that up there so you can see the entire um, application process. 
um, before you submit. So yeah, no problem. Um, okay. Will the slides be shared later today? So we're, what we're going to do for the slides uh, for this presentation is actually we're going to edit it a little bit, um, you know, all my ums and ahs. And uh, we are going to post it on the website, so it'll be available um, for anybody who's interested to, to watch it at a later date. Um, In terms of you know submitting your proposals and what that looks like, there there are um, uh, word limits that you know when you're in the application form it tells you how many words you can submit, and there are more instructions within that uh, in the uh, application. And uh, like I had mentioned, that uh, Jean asked, we will um, provide we'll put a link to the entire application process in in a PDF form so you can take a look at it before you start your submission. But again, you can also submit. Um, you can also start your submission and save it and go back to it later, but we'll, we'll provide that also. Um, so you have the, all the information, you can have all the information prepared before you, you get in there and start, um, your application or submitting your proposal. Yeah, we have a first time submitting to CBIE. Uh, we welcome new, new, um, ideas from different areas. I'm really excited to, to see that we, we have some, some names on the, on the uh, attendees list that I recognize. And so that's great to see. And then some new ones as well. So really excited. We're really hoping, we're, we're really hoping, sorry, hoping, we're really hoping that, you know, because we're, we're sort of, um, I don't have a, a very defined theme and that it's very open that we're going to get some interesting, proposals, maybe from areas or different um, areas of the institutions or maybe, you know, municipal. I think I saw somebody talk about how cities are working with international students. And so we're looking for different, uh, different groups and different uh, people working in this sector, but from different angles, we're hoping to get some proposals uh, really to share that information out um, more broadly. Uh, Um, so we had something, uh, just, uh, we do have uh, space, we do have a uh, number of word counts on our proposals uh, for all of our, all of the answers um, uh, for two reasons. Um, one is, is because we, we want to have um, concepts and ideas that can be very clearly articulated, but also we have a volunteer panel and, and we have to ensure that uh, the amount of, of proposals that we're reviewing and the amount of content for each proposals is manageable. So we do um, have limitations in terms of, of uh, the answers to all of the, the uh, application questions or the proposal submission questions. All right. Is there anything else that anybody would like to, to ask? Perfect. Anything from Ali or Paige that I missed that you wanted to um, to add here before we wrap up? Um, nothing to add, but I'd just like to thank you all for submitting your uh, proposals. We're really excited to read over them and um, have our committee review them and uh, we're really excited for all of you to attend CBIE 2021. So thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, and if you have any more questions or if there's anything that you're interested, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We have a, a conference email. So one of us on the team will be able to, to respond to you um, if there's anything that seems unclear. Um, but yeah, look for updates in your inboxes. Um, I also, just for those who are members that are on the line, we will be posting a lot of things in our community hub, which we've recently revised and updated and redesigned. So uh, there'll be information that comes there as well. Um, and uh, we're really excited to, to get this process rolling and excited to, to hear from you and, and what's happening out in your institutions or in the sector at large. And uh, we hope to see you all virtually in November. So thanks everybody, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.